morning guys so your your topic for today would be well still designing but after designing in the 2d form we're now going to move on to as promised drawing in the cast so uh, the difference between drawing in the paper and in the cast is that the cast is more like of a 3d form so we're going to draw it as if we are already placing the wax itself or how the metal casting would look like if it has already been casted so yeah so we're going to use this design or this case and we're going to try and do it step by step using an empty cast so this cast has already been what surveyed partially with tripoding and everything yep and so yeah there so yeah as similar to the steps before of course you we have already determined our what primary abutments and that is the um one six one three and two five so i'm correct yeah normally how do we do this after we have tripoded and surveyed we are going to prepare our abutment tooth as if they're going to receive whatever they need to receive so if you need to recontour it for it to have a better um proximal area then do so so since i have no carver We'll try to partially carve it nicely. So I have used a cutter. You cannot see because yeah, it's very difficult to do so under a very limited space. Yeah, and so there, if you want to recontour. Mm -hmm. I'm freehand surveying because i have no surveyor at home nonetheless just imagine that i have surveyed using your surveyor okay so first step imagine that we have already prepared our rest seats singulum rest in this area and then what and crucial rest in this area and then the rest so similar to what we have done what i normally do is that i draw first our receipts well actually you can do any of the way because you already know the design so yeah so first we draw a singulum receipt for example yep there together with of course your guide planes and proximal plates so normally we just outline this first so it's just pure outline here we do it the same way i don't know if you could notice but my proximal plate is slightly placed at the lingual area or is curving towards the lingual area in this case you will know the reason why later i'll try to explain but now we just outline and even here we are going to simulate a proximal plate or a minor connector connected with your occlusal receipt there and here of course your occlusal receipt i'm so sorry for the dirty finger i have problems with my hand it's acting up my eczema is everywhere nonetheless yep we still do our class so we just connect that going down this is going to be a little bit 
of a boring topic, but nonetheless, you need to learn this. Right, so that's your minor connector. Next up, since we have already determined such, we need to draw our major connector. And we know that our major connector here is a, an antero posterior palatal strap. So we just go ahead and continue going downwards for our minor connector. Mm -hmm. Even here. And then here. Always remember that your minor connector must meet your major connector at a what? Degree? 90 degrees. Right. Now we need the distance from the lingual surface to the major connector. We have around 4 to 6. So let's imagine 4 to 6. So it's around here. If you want to be accurate enough, you may use your prosthodontic rulers. You may also use your calipers and other measuring devices for accuracy. And then always remember if you're going to include the rugae, you need to in end up in the rugae that is what? at the anterior slope of the rugae. Do not end up at the crest of the rugae or even posterior to the slope of the rugae because it will just have problems in coverage and might impinge your rugae area. And we know although that your rugae provides secondary, um, what they call this, secondary support of your denture, it still needs the overall cover of the rugae. If it's impinging spaces, then th that will be a problem. Okay, where are we? Right here. So we draw. I slightly like extending this side because since it's an antero posterior palatal strap, if I end up in this area, it's going to be too small. So I may extend one tooth at the back before I start drawing my posterior area so that's the slope right and then outlining I may do that as well and then for here remember that if you are free end you will end up at the pointing at your maxillary tuberosity area so we try to do that as well so here there i don't know if you can see is it visible it's focusing yes it is and then if you already know where to end up you just connect so normally we slope going up here in that area mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's so hard to draw with the camera in front I don't know if you're seeing this let me extend it a little bit So why have I extended this? Because we need a little bit of a catch in this area. So there's so this is just an outline. We're going to fix this later on. There. So that's the outline. So here also, I hope you remember what I'm doing. Similar to just drawing. In the paper, I'm already placing the outlines of my major connector. Right. Now, let's go with your hole in the center for us to be able to separate. So, what we need actually is what? A distance of at least 6 to 10, 8 to 10 millimeters in the anterior, 8 to 10 millimeters at the back, at the back, and then 8 to 10 millimeters at the sides. So, normally, what I use as a guide is actually the slopes of my palette. So, this is the slope, the junction. Of the vertical slope I don't know if you can see this is the vertical slope this one ah. oh my gosh. I'm 
video showing all of it. This is the vertical slope and this is the horizontal plane and then the vertical slope. So what they normally do in patient cases is that we follow that slope. That's actually a guide. But if you'd like to use the measurement, it's just fine nonetheless. So we just use the measurement. So 8 to 10. Maybe it would end up around here. 8 to 10. So maybe it's around here. And then 8 to 10 here. Then 8 to 10. I'm going to try to push this a little bit more backward so that it's not that big or not that small of a hole. So 8 to 10, maybe around here. So we what draw our palatal opening. And no need to follow the sloping going at the back here. No, do not need to follow that. That's actually what the major connector. And what's the reason for you having this opening again? As we have discussed before, this is for giving back the sensation of feeling. Yeah, so that's for feeling. Now, you've noticed that you're tripod marks are what within the the major connect so connector so next time when you do your tripod markings make sure that you place them in an area where there will be no components passing over them so that that's just a tip right now next up after we have drawn our major connector we draw your what minor connectors so, yep, for minor connector, we will try to draw your grid work. So, your grid work just what passes over here. If, we'll go, if it's posterior, you may go beyond the crest. So, this is the crest. So, you may go beyond a little bit. Then just an outline sorry for the moving video because my phone is just hanging then you may go and end up two-thirds of the way or in the middle of two-thirds and then don't forget your finish lines And your finish lines actually will end up at your major connector. I don't know if you can see it's here. It's not only where your minor connector lies, no, it will go all the way because you will have the catching of your denture base until at the back. Right. And then we draw our grid work. Yeah here because it's slightly a little bit at the anterior you may end up on top of the crest so yeah connect just connect everything as you could don't forget your finish lines then draw right there now after we have drawn your major connector minor connector and your rest the next thing that we need to do is actually to place your direct retainers so how do we draw our direct retainers so for an eye bar you need to step back at least one tooth away or even a half a tooth away for a premolar, I told you that you need to end up exactly in the middle of the premolar. So, this is the middle, right? And you just need to end up at exactly at the middle below your survey line. So, exactly at the middle. So, that's where your eye bar will end. So, you just need to outline your eye bar 
possibly whenever your eye bar passes through your gingival margin or your gingival crevice you need to pass it by 90 degrees now we just need to knit this up with it with this light curve make sure an eye bar is actually curved out so you need to curve this out and I you quite suck at drawing <laughs> don't worry you'll improve even me I'm still improving so there your eye bar oh it's slightly fat in this area Listen, it's just an outline. And that's an eye bar. Exactly at the middle. It's exactly in the middle. In the middle. There. Next is the eye bar at your canine area. Since our design here entails the use of an eye bar in the canine. Because your patient is not maarte or not choosy. They metal display is okay for them. <laughs> Anyways, for a canine, it's different for the placing of your eye bar because in the premolar, as I said, it's where exactly in the middle. But for the canine, it's where it's going to be meshed to the middle. So if this is the middle, it's the middle, you will go slightly meshed to the middle, and exactly below the finish line. I know the the survey line. I'm so sorry, not the finish line. So we will end up below the finish line. There. So why is it at the meshaling? Because when you're going to look at this, your premolar actually has no intention or has no probability of it going forward where there is whenever this rotation. Because there is another tooth stopping its motion going to the meshal. While for the pre for the canine Whenever there's rotation, your canine might be pushed forward. So it might go forward. If it does, if it does, you need something to bar it off for rotation or for it to catch so that it will not slide off. You need to slightly put your eye bar meshally to the canine for a catch and for better retention. Because for a premolar, exactly at the middle is already your wanted retention. Right, so we go and connect this again with a slight curving. We're going to have a very mobile video char because it's going to move everywhere. And if you notice the base of your eye bar is thicker even though this is an eye bar we still need to follow tapering okay there so we're trying we're, we can already see oh i forgot to line this up sorry yep still need to follow there so i have two eye bars next up we do your circlet so for the circlet when it comes to your retentive arm it needs to pass by three areas so you just need to determine where it ends normally it ends there at that dot but we measure that with an undercut gauge again i don't have a surveyor so we'll try to freehand everything so now we just slide slope and end and then don't forget your tapering Try to fix this there. 
so that can be your retentive arm now we go to your reciprocal arm and we know that your reciprocal arm just lies on top of your survey line so that's the third survey line so normally it's around the middle third so that's correct it's the middle third so we just draw above it above still following the survey line yeah. and in this survey line or in this type of component there will be no tapering of any form sorry for the moving video there so that's your circuit class connected by a minor connector there so yeah so it's likely looking good so this is how you draw or outline first your design now explanation why is that your rpi in the premolar premolar huh, has this kind of proximal plate we know that it's supposed to be what slightly shorter because it tends to rotate so we need to bring this down a little bit so we erase sorry i'm erasing you can see there i erased it so we need to bring it down a little bit if possible sorry for the move, moving moving charm we need to place it around two to three millimeters below your or just two to three millimeters height below your marginal crest that's why you need to prepare your proximal guide planes properly since I cannot prepare it, let just go on with this way. Well, just imagine this has a shorter proximal plate. Now, you see that it's slightly what? Curving out towards the lingual area, right? So it covered a little bit of your lingual area here. Compared to other proximal plates that are what? Just at the sides. For this type or premolar, Whenever you try to use an I bar or an RPI at the premolar or even a molar, you need to extend a little bit going to the lingual. It's because your direct retainer is slightly or directly in the middle, so it will tend to push the tooth backwards. Now, compared to a circlet class that has what a reciprocal arm at the lingual surface, this does not have a reciprocal arm. So what acts as a, as a reciprocal arm is actually your minor connector in this area and the extension of your proximal plate going to the lingual. That's how it has the reciprocation. Is that clear? Yeah, that's why you're going to use this form of proximal plate whenever you use RPI or RPA. Okay. But if it's a canine... If the canine is going to use RPI, for example, you have a rest going here, and then you have a proximal plate, you do not need to extend it towards the lingual. Why? It's because of the placement of your direct retainer, and that's your eye bar, which is slightly on the meshal. So whenever this tries to push the tooth, it pushes it going backwards a little bit. You already have enough proximal plate to hinder such movement. And even your rest okay since the rest comes from where from the lingual so that's the reason okay so that is an outline so that's how easy it is now we just try to shade everything Yeah, so there you go. So that's just a time lapse on how you um, may able to you know, you may shade, but this needs more shading and this needs more refinement. However, 
it's already up to you on how refined you would like it to be. For me, this is still dirty. Hehe. <laughs> Because I don't have the right tools. I only have what? Number two. Pencil. Anyways, at least it works. Yeah, so yes. This is the slightly finished product. So this is what we did. And this was the one that I've shown you last time. So as you can see, the other one's a bit more refined. Similar design. Same case. There. So yeah, it's just the same. So good luck when you try to do this and that's it for today.